Welcome to the Folktale Project, this is Dan Shones. Today we have part two of The Forty Thieves, and we've left with Kasim locked inside of the Thieves' Den. This is part two of The Forty Thieves. About noon, the robbers returned to their cave and saw Kasim's mules roving about with great chests on their backs. This gave them the alarm. They drew their sabers and went to the door, which opened on their captains, saying, Open sesame! Kasim, who had heard their trampling of the horse's feet, resolved to sell his life dearly. So, when the door opened, he leaped out and threw the captain down. In vain, however, for the robbers with their sabers soon killed him. On entering the cave, they saw all the bags laid ready and could not imagine how anyone had got in without knowing their secret. They cut Kasim's body into four quarters and nailed them up inside the cave in order to frighten anyone who should venture in, and went away in search of more treasure. As night drew on, Kasim's wife grew very uneasy and ran to her brother-in-law and told him where her husband had gone. Ali Baba did his best to comfort her and set out to the forest in search of Kasim. The first thing he saw on entering the cave was his dead brother. Full of horror, he put the body on one of his asses and bags of gold on the other two, and covering all with some faggots, returned home. He drove the two asses laden with gold into his own yard and led the other to Kasim's house. The door was opened by his slave, Morjana whom he knew to be both brave and cunning. Unloading the ass, he said to her, This is the body of your master who has been murdered, but whom we must bury as though he had died in his bed. I will speak with you again, but now tell your mistress I am come. The wife of Kasim, on learning the fate of her husband, broke out into cries and tears, but Ali Baba offered to take her to live with him and his wife if she would promise to keep his counsel and leave everything to Morgiana whereupon she agreed and dried her eyes. Morgiana, meanwhile, sought an apothecary and asked him for some lozenges. My poor master, she said, can neither eat nor speak, and no one knows what his distemper is. She carried home the lozenges and returned the next day weeping and asked for an essence only given to those just about to die. Thus, in the evening, no one was surprised to hear the wretched shrieks and cries of Cassim's wife and Morgiana telling everyone that Cassim was dead. The day after, Morgiana went to an old cobbler near the gates of the town who opened his stall early, put a piece of gold in his hand, and bade him follow her with his needle and thread. Having bound his eyes with a handkerchief, she took him to the room where the body lay, pulled off the bandage, and bade him sew the quarters together, after which she covered his eyes again and led him home. Then they buried Cassim, and Morgiana, his slave, followed him to the grave, weeping and tearing her hair, while Cassim's wife stayed at home, uttering lamentable cries. The next day, she went to live with Ali Baba, who gave Cassim's shop to his eldest son. The forty thieves, on their return to the cave, were much astonished to find Cassim's body gone and some of their money bags. We are certainly discovered, said the captain, and shall be undone if we cannot find out who it is that knows our secret. Two men must have known it. We've killed one, we must now find the other. To this end, one of you who is bold and artful must go into the city dressed as a traveller and discover whom we have killed, and whether men talk of the strange manner of his death. If the messenger fails, he must lose his life, lest we be betrayed. One of the thieves started up and offered to do this, and the rest had highly commended him for his bravery, and he disguised himself and happened to enter the town at daybreak, just by Baba Mustafa's stall. The thief bade him good day, saying, Honest man, how can you possibly see to stitch at your age? Old as I am, replied the cobbler, I have very good eyes, and you will believe me when I tell you that I sewed a dead body together in a place where I had less light than I have now. The robber was overjoyed at his good fortune, and, giving him a piece of gold, desired to be shown the house where he stitched up the dead body. At first, Mustafa refused, saying that he had been blindfolded. But when the robber gave him another piece of gold, he began to think that he might remember the turnings if blindfolded as before. This means succeeded. The robber partly led him, and was partly guided by him, right in front of Cassim's house. 
the door of which the robber marked with a piece of chalk. Then, well pleased, he bade farewell to Baba Mustafa and returned to the forest. By and by, Morgiana, going out, saw the mark the robber had made, quickly guessed that some mischief was brewing, and, fetching a piece of chalk, marked two or three doors on each side, without saying anything to her master or mistress. The thief, meantime, told his comrades of his discovery. The captain thanked him and bade him show him the house he had marked. But when they came to it, they saw that five or six of the houses were chalked in the same manner. The guide was so confounded that he knew not what answer to make, and when they returned, he was at once beheaded for having failed. And that is part two of The Forty Thieves, and we see that Kasim, while foolhardy, had a really, really smart slave, Borgiana, and she... She is going to be quite the asset to Alibaba, I believe. This is Dan Scholes of the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you'd like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, or Threads at Folktale Project. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you're enjoying the podcast, please Leave us a kindly worded review. The reviews help new people find the show, and I read every one of them, and I love them all, and I appreciate you so much. As always, thank you so much for listening. <laughs>